Hi everyone, in this lecture we will be talking about the box model. The CSS box model is a representation of any individual HTML element. Now I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to provide some uh, um, CSS properties. So I'm going to grab the section, I'm going to give it a height. So I'm going to give the, the section a height of 250, so 250 pixels, uh, not 60. Come on, buddy. 50. And I'm going to give it a width of 200 pixels. Let's pass in some padding of, let's say, 10 pixels, right? And some margin of 15 pixels along with some border. So I'm going to grab the border. I'm going to say solid uh, 5 pixels. Uh, let's grab the color is 777. Let's save that. Now, something about the color, and uh, you know hexadecimal has six digits or six alphanumeric digits, but if all six are the same, like all of, all of them are like seven, uh, like six sevens, then you can just provide the first three and it is still going to work. So I'm going to bring this down. There we go. Perfect. So now we can see that our width is 200 pixels, height is 250. I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to grab the width. Um, you know what? Uh, how can I make this work? Uh, I think this is visible, right? I'm going to a little bit up there. Perfect. So we have a height of uh, 250, width of 200. So when you say padding 10 pixel, it means padding top, right, bottom, and left. When you say border 5 pixel, it says border top, border 5, uh, sorry, border top, right bottom and left the same goes for margin when you say 15 you're going to see that 15 top uh, right bottom and left so when you set it to only one value that is going to be universal throughout the element if you want to set different paddings different margins for the element you need to specify them differently so use either the shorthand which we talked about or like specifically say padding right padding left but if you say only one value within the paddock that that is going to be applied throughout the uh, like uh, uh, like surrounding the element uh, like you um, identically something like that so the value is going to be the same for all four sites now there is a common convention when creating websites and that is whenever you have whenever you want to create a website one is one of the pre uh, like pre-creation of that website that you do like preparation state which is also called like in the utility components one of those is like grabbing everything and setting that like using the universal selector using setting the box sizing box sizing to border box this is a very hot topic most of developers do it and this basically says that you can see now the height and the width of the content which is where this is highlighted is independent from the padding from the border okay but if you say th the reason that this is happening is because the default value for box sizing is content box when it is content box if i save it nothing changes right because that is the default value but if you change it to border box i'm not going to save it i'm just going to explain it first it says the content of the the um the size of the content has to include the padding and the border as well this is very good because if you have two sections let me just create another uh section as well and i'm just going to give this a t a class so just to differentiate them and i'm going to say section dash two save that so if we have two sections you can see that we have two sections here right now if i grab uh the section dash two uh let's let's actually create an article so they're not identical so i'm going to say let me remove the class so let's just create article save that so now you can see the second one doesn't have those styling so article now I'm going to grab this, I'm going to comment this entire thing out. Uh, let's remove this from there and from there. 
Okay, so I've commented that one out. I'm going to bring the box sizing border box to this content. And for this one, I'm going to apply basically the same styling. And I save it. And now we can see the problem is that even though the height, the width, all of them are the same for both of these boxes, for both of these contents, they're called boxes as well. That is why everything, that is why we have the box model, because every element in HTML is translated into a box in CSS. That's why we have box sizing, the box model. So even if it is a title, H1, it is a box in CSS. It's a section, it is a box. Even the body element is a box in CSS. So CSS treats all the HTML elements as boxes. That's why you have box sizing, box model, and all that good stuff. So this is the problem. You can see we have both of these styles the same, but just because we have said border box include the padding and the margin, include the padding and the border. I'm just going to bring the margin down. Include these within the height and width. These the size of these is different. Now this is something that you don't want to you don't want to actually really worry about. You want whenever you say padding. And whenever you have the same height and width for two different elements, you want it to act in the same way. Now, this is a good thing because I'm just going to uncomment this one out. And when I save it, now you can see both of them are equal. The reason that you want to include the padding and border within the height and width is because you want the ultimate or the eventual height of your entire box to be that height that you have specified. But if you do not do border box, if you just do content box, that is not going to be the case. So if I just bring the border box to here and if I save it, even though the, high, the width of this box is 200, the width of this box is 200 as well, they're not equal. Why? Because this padding is included in there. Now, in the, at the end of the day, what you want to do is you want to make sure the height and the width for all of the identical boxes are the same. And, and whenever you set, for example, the height to 250, you don't want to worry if you have padding or not. Because if you have padding, that padding will be added to your height, will, will not be added to your height. So the content will be a little bit bigger than what you have expected. What do I actually mean by that? Let's just save everything. We know that the, let's go into box sizing and that is actually a better representation of what we're talking about. Let's grab the section. So the width is 200 pixels, but that is not the width of the box. The width of the box is 200 pixels plus 10, which is 210 plus this 10, which is 220 plus this border five and this border five, which is 230. So as a developer, as a CSS stylist, you say, okay, I have set the size to 200. Why the size of this section is 230? I have highlighted the site, the size for you. You can see that it says section in front of it. If I go on there, oops, 230, there we go. 230 by 280. Why? I have specified 200. Where is the extra 30 coming from? It is coming from the padding and the border that's why we say box sizing border box contain the padding and the bordering border inside the width and the height we don't want to specify one width and height and then end up with a different one this is going to ruin your entire responsiveness and you will never be able to res make any website responsive. That is why we comment that one out and we comment this one in. And we say, whenever I set the width to 200, please just make it 200. Don't do anything else. And now if I hover on this, uh, where are you, buddy? There we go. You can see that. Uh, let me just grab this. I'm not sure why is it not showing this section. So let me just click on this section. There we go. So you can see that the width is 200 and the height is 250, even though we have padding and we have border. So again, just to conclude everything, we set the box sizing to border box. Uh, 
just to make sure the height and the width that we specify for our elements are going to be the eventual or the final height and width that is specified for the element. You're always going to have paddings for your elements. That is something that you cannot escape. Borders are optional. Sometimes you have them, sometimes you don't have them, but padding Believe me, it doesn't matter what the element is, you are going to have padding for that element. When, when you have padding, the width and the height of your content, which you have specified, is going to change, and that is going to take the control out of your hand into the hand of the browser. And that in, in that case, you will not be able to, you will not feel good. And responsiveness is going to be a nightmare. That's it for this lecture. See you in the next one.